Never let it go. Never let it go. And never get so frustrated that you want to let this go either. So as we continue with section 1.2, talking about our means versus our medians and our um, looking at our box plots, because that is our objective on this video to be able to identify, well, for this one, we're able to identify mean versus median, which is better. We're going to be um, making and interpreting some box plots, calculating our means, our medians, and yes, using our calculator to do so. So never let it go. Okay. Now go ahead and read this problem. And the overall question is asking you right here, explain, okay, which of these numbers is the mean and which one represents the median? Now notice what I have up here. I have the value of just looking at your mean versus your median, which tells you that it's right skewed. And when it's right skewed, that means we have houses that are lower value. Now, this was in July of 2012 in which we, we had our, our great recession, it's called. Well, we had a lot of houses that were lower in those in that time. So for that reason, low economy, more houses, lower value. So I see that the mean was 263 and the median was 220 um is was 224,000 I'm missing a zero okay and again I'm looking at the comparison of our mean versus our median so as I do the comparison here this is larger big mouth towards a larger number that means that more data the hump is in that direction more data lower in lower how in terms of on context the lower prices of the housing okay now let's go ahead and read this next one so as I look at this this was my thought process first of all I had to figure out exactly how many employees there were so I added the four the two and the one to get my eight employees and then I looked and saw how much each of them were making it so as I made a note right here all but the owner was making um, 22k or 50k so this owner is making this grandiose amount but everybody else is making a small amount so then I looked and found the average of it in my calculator and the median also in my calculator so if I wanted to be unethical and I was a recruiter for the company, I would say that on average, and the book uses the word typical, which I like, the average or the typical salary is 60, um, 60K, which is not wrong because why? We took into account the firm, his, um, his income, which I didn't put it in the calculator, but I want to say is probably an outlier but we can confirm that both with our calculator and our formula. Okay, now let's look at the next problem, problem number 90. We need to refer back to the cowboy situation. And as we look back at, like I said, problem number 80, here are the pounds of the players that they listed. And we needed to find the interquartile range, find and interpret the interquartile range. So let's remember right here the interquartile range is Q3 minus Q1. Please remember the interquartile range is the middle 50%. And yes, it is a type of range. So that's just a, a preamble to remembering the information. So we're going to take it and you're going to plug it into the calculator. And when you plug it into the calculator, We'll notice that the interquartile range, the IQR, is 15 pounds. Now let's go ahead and read the, and as we interpret it, the middle 15, the middle 50 percent of the weight of the Dallas Cowboys has a range of 15 pounds. I don't know what that is. It's getting sticking. Based on these numbers that I have right down here. 
Next, the next question is determine whether there are outliers. Show your, show your work. Okay, so here we know our formula for our outliers. Here's the low end. And here I didn't have a chance to put it in there. But this one is the high end. And please notice the bottom line here is this. We have no of, none of their weights that are below 262 pounds, 62.5 pounds, and none of their weights that are above 322.5 um, pounds. So yes, we are confirming that there are no outliers. And please recognize the rounding. Don't round up, don't round down, keep it there. Because we're talking about on average. Now, the next thing I want to talk about here as we continue talking about box plots, I kind of lied to you by accident saying that we wouldn't have to construct them. And yes, we do, but the, we're going to take it from the, from the calculator onto the paper. So we have the information right here for Hank Aaron and Barry Bonds, the data that I've highlighted in the yellow. Once you put it into your calculator, you're going to find these values. And yes, these values are necessary because now we are going to do a box plot by hand. Now, I need you to go into your calculator, go to edit, and you are going to put your data for Aaron in L1 and then your data for Barry Bonds in L2. So go ahead and pause while you put that in. Next, what I'm going to do now is I am going to do a side-by-side -side box plot. Now here's our data. Now remember how to put this in our calculator. We're going to press the, the second y equals. I notice I have a box plot here. I um, have it on the modified box plot. That's all we have, always what we have, the um, only thing we're using. And I'm going to have it on. And here is where Aaron is. But I want Barry Bonds to be on there at the same time. So now I'm going to go to second stack plot. And now I'm going to go down to plot two. And I'm about to turn on plot two. There was an easier way of doing that. But this is the way I'm doing it for now. Okay, so plot two. I'm going to turn it on. Remember, don't forget to press enter. And yes, I need to make sure it gets all the way down there to the modified box plot. Then after that, I am going to remember you're going to press enter again. And how you move around this, you're going to either use your arrow going to left and um, going to the left and right, or you're using your up and down key. So you have to play with it till you feel comfortable with it. Oh, I need my bonds is in L2, so I need to press second number two to get myself L2. Remember, press enter to make sure it accepts it. And now I'm going to go zoom, stat. I'm going to quit out of this. This happens sometimes. I don't know why, though. Not with this calculator. I'm going to go zoom, stat. And there are my graphs. You know you can press trace to see your different values. And now we're going to use these values to graph this by hand. Or I shouldn't say by hand, with the assistance of the calculator. Now please notice on both of them the lowest value is 10. And then notice here as I'm pushing my arrow over to the left, that's my L1, which is Aaron. I'm going to push my arrow down. And all of a sudden, now I'm L2 bond. So here going up takes me back to my L1. Pressing down takes me to L2. But I want to see what my maximum value is because I want to make a, a graph. So based on this information here, my lowest value is 10. My highest value is 70. Now what I've got to do is I have to make a graph. I need to increment these in units of 10. Why not? I'm going to have Aaron on top and Bonds on the bottom. Then the next thing I'm going to do is have my calculator near me 
as I give them their values. Okay, I'm just going to put little markings now. So for Aaron, I have 10. Then I have my quartile 1, which is 26. So my minimum is 10. I have 26 is about there. My median is 34, which is about there. And I'm going to draw a line because there's my median. Then I have my third quartile, which is about here. And then I have my maximum value, which is 47, which is about here. And then what I'm going to do is connect my first quartile and my third quartile, then draw a line. And that is my box plot. So now I need you to confirm your numbers with what I have here. Notice how I started it, just with dots. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing for bonds. Please notice over here I've had to label Aaron's on top, bonds is on the bottom. So you go ahead and now do bonds. Okay, this is what I have so far. Putting this back on here. Yes, I only put 70. 73 is a little bit beyond it. So now I just make my box around it. I should have had a straight edge, but I'm, it's getting late. I'm here too late, so I don't care. But yes, on a test or quiz, AP test, make the lines as, as um, nice as you can. But you won't get nails for not doing it. Okay, now, the question is about the analysis. Now, this analysis is long, but this is the bottom line here. As I look at, so, Aaron has variability, um, has less variability, and played more games than Bond. So, here I've got my spread. Let me find another color. So here I'm talking about my spread, okay? And here I'm giving them the IQR and the range. And honestly, you can get away with either of them, but to make the better statement, the range is better just because the numbers are huge. Then I'm talking about bond has a median average slightly higher than Aaron's by two. So here is my center. Then as I continue talking, although I have no outliers, so here's my O, Bond has an had an amazing year with 73 home runs. Remember, the calculator didn't show me I had an outlier. We used the modified um, box plot, so it would. Okay, so that extreme value did not affect the median, um, but it did affect the mean, which explains why Bond's record um, was approximately symmetric while Aaron's was slightly left skewed. So my whole premise behind all of this is based on all of the above, I believe Aaron is the better player. Forgot to mention the skewness was in here. That's how you do an analysis. Now, I'm going to wait for the problem that's underneath that. I want to talk to you guys about it together. Don't let me forget, please. And I want you to go to page 14 of your notes. So turn the page. And please take a moment to read over this. And notice this we have here. Um, they're re referred to as side to side or back to back box plots. So take a moment and read this and get ready to do an analysis. Okay, so. The bottom line is here. The way I looked at it is that all the distributions are right skewed. Okay, so there is our skewness. Okay, none of them have outliers, so there's our O for our socks. We'll notice here that as education increases down here, that the income also increases. So that is a way of referring to my center. And then also note, as their education rises, there is more variability in their incomes or with their incomes. And there is your spread. So that is a quick analysis that is 100% accurate and we've covered everything. So this is the end of covering those problems and let me put this on YouTube and get ready for the second one.